everyone. Hello and welcome to the Birmingham Vineyard Kids Stream. My name is Lauren and this is my friend Michelle. Hi everyone, it's so great to be here. I'm really looking forward to what we've got lined up for you guys today. Me too. We've got a game, a talk involving chocolate, some time chatting to God, worship, a craft, and of course, we'll be choosing an item from our setup to help us remember to. I can't wait. Let's start with a game, shall we? Yes, definitely. Let's go. Today, we've got a game called Tell Me. I'm going to ask you to tell me something and I want you to shout it as loud as you can at the screen, okay? So tell me your favourite place. Tell me how old you are. Tell me your parents' names. Tell me what your favourite snack is. Tell me what you want to be when you're a grown-up. And tell me your favourite joke. <laughs> There's some really good ones there. Well done, everyone. You're all ready to go. So let's move on. OK, have you got your listening ears ready? Perfect. So I'd like you to imagine something for me. Imagine if every time you wanted to talk to your mum or dad, you had to get your brother or sister or friend to do it for you. You'd have to tell them what you wanted to say and they would have to pass the message on and wait for the answer. Every time you wanted to talk to your parents or ask them a question, you'd have to do this, even if you just wanted to ask them what was for dinner. Hmm. And to make it even harder, your messenger had to climb up to the roof of your house to talk to your parent. It would get pretty tiring, wouldn't it? You'd probably stop wanting to talk to your parents so much about those little things because it was so much effort just to get to them. Now, I know this example is a bit silly, but this is what it might have felt like for the people of Israel, Jesus's ancestors, thousands of years ago, when they wanted to talk to God. They would have had to tell a special priest who could go to the place on the mountain or in the tent or in the temple where God was. Because of the bad things that the people of Israel had done all the way back to Adam and Eve, they had separated themselves from the presence of God. They couldn't spend time in God's presence unless there were a special chosen few in a special place. Now we know that anyone can chat to God at any time, don't we? So what changed then? Do you know? Yes, Jesus came, that's right. God sent Jesus to clear a way for everyone to be close to God again. Jesus chose to take all of that bad stuff that the Israelites did and the stuff that we've done since and do every day upon himself and died as a sacrifice, getting rid of the power of all of that sin forever. Now the Israelites had to sacrifice animals to be forgiven by God. So Jesus took the place of all those animals and died so that we can be forgiven when we believe in him and we're sorry. Jesus's death and resurrection, so coming back to life, also means that we can be with him forever. As we said earlier, we no longer have to use messengers and go on trips to spend time with God and chat to him. Jesus fixed our relationship with God by taking away those sin barriers and giving us his Holy Spirit so we can chat to God anytime and get to know him personally as we chat and catch with him. So we can know that Jesus loves us, he hears us, and he always answers us, even if it's not in the way that we might want or expect. We can chat to Jesus. And this is something that Paul talks about in his letter to the Philippians too. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so in Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Paul really wants us to pray about everything. That means we can chat to Jesus about anything we like. 
We can tell him things like what our favourite thing to watch is on TV, and we can tell him what we worry about and what we're excited for. Christians, followers of Jesus, can tell Jesus anything, and he promises to give us peace that will help us know that God is close and keep our hearts and minds feel safe and strong. A verse in the Bible that helps remind me of this is in Psalm 46, and it says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble, so we will not fear. We don't need to live separate to God. We can handle things much better when he helps us. We can give all of our worries to God and he will help us. The Philippians verse we read earlier said that you will experience God's peace when you chat to God. Okay, story time. One morning I was chatting to God and I was thinking how much I really wanted some chocolate. I hadn't had any in a while and I really wanted some. I was thinking about it a lot. I moved on with my day, I did some jobs, I got a bit distracted, it was just a normal day. Then in the afternoon, my friend came over and handed me a chocolate bar. She said, I think God wanted me to buy you this chocolate. I was amazed. I hadn't told anyone I wanted chocolate. There we go. God had heard me and out of his kindness, he had given me chocolate through someone else. I didn't need this chocolate. There are much more important things, but God had answered me when I just chatted to him. I didn't get the chocolate straight away and God doesn't give me chocolate every time I chat to him about it, but it showed me that God is always listening to me and he loves to answer our prayers, even the small ones. So to finish, what do we need to remember from this? One, because Jesus died for us, we can be close with God forever. We don't need to go and find him or send a message through someone else. Two, we can chat to God about anything, anytime, whether it feels big or small. And three, God loves to answer us. It might not be quickly or in the way that we expect, but he answers us. Christians are people who talk to Jesus. That's so cool. I love the fact that we can chat to God at any time and he's always listening. Yeah, I love how much he cares about each one of us and he's working in all of our lives. Absolutely. Well, Lauren, what have we got today that will help us remember that Christians can talk to Jesus? Well, let me see. Ah, uh, we've got a phone here. Chatting to Jesus is as easy as picking up a phone and talking to a friend. In fact, it's probably even easier than that because you don't even need the phone. Yes, we're going to be making a kind of phone later in our craft this week. But first, let's spend some time chatting to Jesus right now. Okay, remember, we can chat to God anytime, anywhere. So we don't have to be in a certain place or say certain words when we pray. But sometimes it's helpful to sit somewhere comfy that doesn't have too many distractions and to say things that help us to focus on God and invite him into that space. So let's do that now. Come Holy Spirit, we know you're already here but we invite you again into our hearts, God. Would you bring your presence close to us now? Today, like we did in the game at the beginning, we're going to tell God some things, but instead of telling me something, you can tell it to God instead. You can do it out loud or in your head. So tell God now where your favorite place is. Why is it your favourite place? What does God think about that place? Now tell God your favourite joke. If you can't think of one, tell God something funny that's happened to you recently. Why did you find it funny? What does God say about your joke?
And finally, let's tell God what you want to be when you're a grown-up. It might be a job, it might be something in your character, or maybe it's something that you want to achieve. Why do you want to do that thing? Chat to God about how you feel about it. Thank you, God, that you love to listen when we chat to you. You know everything about us anyway, but we love to tell you what's going on in our hearts and what's going on in our minds. Thank you for all that you're teaching us today and for being close to us always. Amen. Let's all worship together now with a song.
Thank you, God, that you love me so much. Now it's time for that craft that we mentioned earlier. We're making a telephone out of cups. Take it away, Jocelyn. Hi, kids. And today we're going to make a telephone cup. So you're going to need some items. Two cups, some string or ribbon, and a pair of scissors. And you might need an adult to help you with this one. So first of all, we're going to use our scissors, we're going to open them up and use them to make a little hole for our ribbon or string to go through. So there's one, you can see through that hole. And then the next one, we'll do the same. There we go. So I've got two, two holes and now we'll get some ribbon. I'm going to do a short piece of string, but your string can be as long as you like. So I'm going to then use my scissors to cut the ribbon. Then we need to thread this ribbon through the hole in the pot. So there we go. So you should be able to see it come poking out the other side like that. And we're going to make a couple of knots in the end. So that's one knot, that's two knots, and a third one just to make sure. So pull that back through and then you want to pull it so that you can feel the knot trying to tug. And then we'll do it the same with the other cup, thread it through all the way through so you can see it poking out the other side and then we do one knot, two knots and a third knot. There we go and then we pull that string back through and there you have it, your telephone cup ready to talk. Enjoy! Well, Michelle, I'm definitely going to make one of those later. That looks so fun. And did you know when you pull the string tight and speak into the cup at one end, the person at the other end will be able to hear you? Wow, that's so exciting. I can't wait to try that. But before I do, it's time to say goodbye for this week. We'd love to get to know you all better though. Hear your feedback on these videos and we'd love to pray for you. So please do email us and visit the kids page of the Birmingham Vineyard website. Yes, everything you need to get involved and join in the fun is there. Well, that's all from us this week. So we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.